Good morning, everybody. This is Dale again. I want to share with you an insight about gift giving as we approach uh, Christmas season. Uh, people are all about, uh, our culture says, about giving gifts. And my daughter asked me recently, uh, Dad, you know, what do you want for Christmas? And and uh, I don't think, I think my answer probably wasn't exactly what she wanted. She wanted to get me, you know, something big and fun or, you know, a game or a toy or something like that. And I said, well, uh, how about some shaving cream or disposable razors or uh, how about some deodorant or uh, scrubbing bubbles for my shower? And, oh, no, that's not what I want to get you. Uh, you know, it's really hard sometimes to figure out what to get people uh, for uh, special times. But uh, this Christmas season, really, why is it about giving gifts? It's because what God has given to us. The Old Testament talks about uh, this coming Messiah, uh, this, this uh, gift from God to the world, to humanity, that was to help take away the sins of the world, to help bring peace between God and people uh, to help bring clarity to what the things of God are about and uh, uh, at least for me uh, it, Jesus really answers that question for me so clearly but I want to the, the focus of this is why do people give gifts around Christmas time because of the gift when you view Jesus as the Messiah as the coming Messiah, the fulfillment of that, the one to bring peace, then it's thank you, God, for doing that. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making a way that even I can be made clean. Even my life can matter. My life can count as messed up as it is. I can't fix myself. I can't fix the problems I cause myself. I need somebody to fix me. I need a savior. That's really so much about what Christmas is about. It's saying, God, thank you for sending a savior for me. Jesus, thank you for fulfilling the purpose that you were called to fulfill and making a way for Dale. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for that. So, how do I say thank you with my life and not just with my words? Well, I can do a lot, a lot of things, but how about if I listen to what Jesus said he wants? And I want to encourage you to read two parts of the Bible. Uh, Isaiah 58, it's an Old Testament passage, talking about, you really think this is what I want? It's talking about a fast. But no, and then it turns and it says, no, let me tell you what I want, what makes a difference to me. These are my scrubbing bubbles. This is my gift list, if you will. So read Isaiah 58. The second thing, but Jesus does a very similar thing, except he says it in reverse. And he says this in, at the end of chapter 25 of Matthew. Uh, I, would, I would encourage you to do this. Chapter 25, the end of that, is really just the answer to a question that started at the beginning of chapter 24 when the disciples and Jesus had come into Jerusalem. But they were asking him about the end of the age, and I'm not going to go into all that uh, right now, but it ends by this one story. And I think this story is probably, I don't think there's anything in Scripture, anything in the Bible, any clearer for me than this thing that Jesus said. He said, if you want to do something that values, that matters to me, I'm telling you about it right now. And he said, when the end of the age comes, it's going to be like a shepherd gathering all his flock, all the nations before him. And on the right hand, he puts the sheep. And on the left hand, he puts the goats. And I want to focus on the things he said to the sheep because this is the answer to the question for me. Is this what Jesus is, says he values? And he said to the sheep on his right, he said, come you who are blessed by my Father. Come to this place that has been prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I was naked and you gave me clothes. I was sick 
and in prison and you came to me and and they responded no wait a minute you've been you hadn't been here you've been gone when did we do that to you and this rang like a bell for me when I saw it in view of what I understand now Jesus said this yeah I wasn't here but when you did it to the least of these my brothers to the people that you think are even the least you did it to me and it was ding is that the answer to the question is this what Jesus wants is this what God is telling me that he wants for a gift so what gift do I give Jesus what gift do I give God I don't know what you're gonna give but I would encourage you to look at those words and just to test drive it, just to see with your life if you started giving this gift of God to say thank you and I want to honor you and I want to worship you why don't you just try this for a while see how that fits see how it starts to make a difference in your life see how you start to see humanity in places that you probably have never seen it before see how you start to see people that they're all around they've always been there but we just haven't been engaged do you want to say thank you this Christmas then start a new life journey and when you do, you will start to see people in a whole different light. I want to encourage you to not only yourself, but to join with ROT, this organization I've helped to start, and all these other help agencies around our county. Renew Our Community is aimed at building broken lives and helping to rally our community to do that, to help build up our entire entire community I want you to join us in giving this gift and I want to be very specific about this it's it is giving everything about you but also it's about giving financially the Bible talks about this where your money is your heart will be also what am I giving to make it where it's not just makes me feel good. No, my heart's there. I'm concerned. I'm invested in what they are doing. Those things make sense to me. I hope this has been helpful for you because God's changed me through this story and through living the way that Jesus said. Merry Christmas.